in live. I click in live. I click in live. I already clicked live, man. You're just embarrassing us. Oh, sorry. It's your lack of professionalism. Oh, sorry. How's everyone doing? Everyone is complaining because we're late again. I won't say who made us late. Prison rules don't allow me to snitch on my friend. <laughs> we have to be no. very fair here. I was I was here three minutes after we were supposed to start. Yeah, this so was like this was like fifty fifty. Yeah, but as soon as you came on, you said no, I have to go do something, and then you barred, started off, and then I started coughing, and I was like, I need to go get a cough drop, and then so. Uh, <clears throat> Imagine we did all the all the stuff that makes us late, but we did it like half an hour beforehand so that we're on time. Wouldn't that be weird? That, that makes no sense. It's un very unreasonable. Yeah. Very unreasonable. Yeah. Some people are pointing out, Mr. Price says, it's amateur hour it whenever is. Always is. AP is involved. It always is. And that's, what's, that's what makes it good. That's what makes it because it is, it is more natural and more, more human. Mm -hmm. And that, that is what's actually good about this. So our, our delays might actually be um, a, a, the, the value that we add to these live streams. It's a feature. And uh, one comment here says, atheists are always late. Yes, that's because they have uh, no moral compass and therefore no moral obligation to be on time and honor their commitments. All right. True. Uh, True. Hey, yo. Yes. So we're going to talk about miracles. <laughs> David, yes. what flavor is your cough drop? This is, I don't know, it tastes like cherry or something like that. What color is your cough? It's red. It's red. I think it's cherry. Um, so, <laughs> Fareed is really sticking with this uh, uh, moon splitting in Sura, uh, in Sura 54. Um, hey, check this out. Malenga says, David Wood has been intellectually molested by Muhammad Hijab. Notice that all their claims are always about being molested and stuff, like it's perpetually yeah. in their mind. Like, he molested you. He molested you. That I would accept that one part, like uh, being molested by Muhammad Hijab, but I wouldn't say that you were molested or that we were intellectually molested. But uh, I can see why somebody would think that Muhammad Hijab molests people. Yeah, isn't isn't that the guy who, in the clip that we've been through multiple times, says that if you just go with the Quran, you'll conclude that you can have sex with a five year old? That that's his. Yes. Yeah, hey, you know what? You know, I wasn't gonna. Do, this was this, ladies and gentlemen. This is not part of the show. This is just because we have some uh, some uh, hijab fans here. So let's go ahead and check out the clip one more time, just because we watched it last week and I already had it uh, in the uh, in the list here. Here we go. If you look just at the Quran, oh wow, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Oh my goodness. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. It's not in the Quran. If you just it's read the Quran, the Quran, it is halal. It would just it's it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. In Surah Al Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. Uh -huh, that's true. And then he says, Wallahi lam ya hidden. Wallahi lam ya hidden. And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important. So the Quran is saying, re refers to marrying, having sex with, and divorcing girls who have never had puberty. That's not according to us, that's according to Muhammad Hijab who intellectually molests people. I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? The, the, Wait a minute, what did you say? Yes, when you're allowed to have sex with a girl has nothing to do with puberty. He just said that. It's not because of puberty because that verse in the Quran actually says, Lam yahidn. They never had puberty before. So you, you can't go around that. He just said you can't go around. You can't go around the fact that the Quran allows you to have sex with girls who have never reached puberty. Look at all these girls in the crowd looking up at him like what? The Quran doesn't say, doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. I dare you to find one verse he in the Quran you. Triple dog where it says you. you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm. Prove to me.
that you can't have sex with a five-year-old according to the Quran. Or oh, you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm, or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. So if you're a Quran alone, you're allowed to have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. One verse. I want one verse in the Quran from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which says that she has to be pubescent. So okay, so that makes it halal from your perspective. It's halal. From your perspective, it's halal. You know in the Quran it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mum. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a pre-pubescent? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say you pinpoint it and say this is where it says prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia and a severe type of pedophilia, a wife abuse, a severe type of wife abuse. Uh -huh. He says if you're if you're Quran only, you're steered towards a severe type of pedophilia, not just average pedophilia, because that would be like average uh, Islam. <laughs> A severe type of pedophilia, meaning even including five-year-olds, or as uh, Daniel Hakikachu would agree, even uh, eleven-month-old babies. Yep. So, um, what what our dear friend, uh, who is very Islamophobic, basically saying is, if you read the Quran, what you get from the Quran is a severe type of pedophilia uh -huh. and and violence and abuse. So that's what you get from the Quran. And and what's crazy, we I don't we've, disagree. we've also discussed this before that uh, what he's actually saying there is, yes, if you just go with the Quran, you'll conclude that it's halal. It's allowed. You're allowed to do it. You're allowed to have sex with a five-year-old. You have to go to the Hadith to find out, no, you should wait a little longer. Why is this relevant? Well, as we pointed out, according to the Quran, if Allah says something is halal and someone else comes along and says, uh, no, that's forbidden, and you go with the person, then you're worshiping that person as a partner with Allah. That's oh, Muhammad's yeah. That's Muhammad's interpretation of Surah 9, where it says that the, the Jews and Christians take their uh, priests and rabbis as uh, lords. And someone actually objected to Muhammad and said, what do you mean? What do you mean? They're not worshiping them. And Muhammad says, yes, actually, when you let them tell you what is halal and it contradicts what God has said, then you're worshiping them. You're, you're taking them as, as, a, as a partner with Allah. And so all notice what hijab is saying here. He's saying, if you just go with what the Quran says, yes, it's halal. But we know it's haram from other people later on. Isn't that interesting? Because yeah. because Muhammad himself said that shirk. It's shirk if you say, "Oh, Allah says it's Allah, but we're going to say it's Haram based on other based on someone other than Allah." That's uh, it's interesting stuff. So they're all so they're worshiping they're worshiping their prophet and uh, his companions when they go with those hadiths and overrule what Allah says. Alhamdulillah, and that's beautiful. All right, why were we on this subject? Because hijabs fans can't stop running their mouths. They love it. The 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 uh, the more the more he. The more perversion he promotes, the more they love him. All right. Now, can we actually get to the topic here? Fareed no. can't get around what, what I would regard as like the worst case for a miracle ever. <laughs> I can't think of a worse, a worse argument for a miracle than the moon splitting in Surah 54, but this is what they're stuck with because they don't have anything better. It's funny. It's like the dumbest case ever, and they're stuck with it because they don't have anywhere else to go. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell us what this story is before? Because we're kind of jumping into the middle of it. The moon splitting story? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, Muhammad is expected to perform a miracle by the people um, around him, the disbelievers. Uh, they don't. They don't believe him. One day he goes out, or one night he goes out, and uh, points. No, he doesn't point. Uh, and, and people go outside and they see the moon split into. According to the different narrations, they see the parts of it go into two different directions. According to one, they see the mountain in between of it. According to others, they see different things. And um, Muhammad just says, uh, "Behold," or something like that. And um, so and the whole narrative there is just they were asking for a miracle and a miracle was performed. The moon split in two, which is why um, in the in the Quran it is mentioned the the the, the hour has come near and the moon has uh, cleft asunder, and um, this is considered a sign 
and was considered a, a, a sign of the end times, actually, by by Muslims for a very long time. In fact, uh, early hadiths contain um, hadiths and, and early Islamic scholarly reports contain narratives that say uh, of the of the signs of the end, some have already passed, including uh, the moon splitting in two. And there are lots of criticisms with with that, with the whole uh, idea that the moon actually did split in two in the seventh in seventh century Arabia. And I made several videos on that because it's I, I love it, um, such as that if the moon had split in two in seventh century Arabia, you could have seen that from lots of places in the world and people would have definitely written something about that but nobody noticed except those guys in arabia apparently but, yeah. and it's uh it's frequently part of the hadith so just just to be clear just to be clear on all this the details that you were just giving there they came they come from the first our first century islamic source when i say first century i mean first century of islam so do the do, do those details come from the quran or they come from stuff way way later yeah from 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 way way later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and aiden here brings up the issue but i thought the quran says muhammad has no miracles something like that oh yes it does do yeah. not ask questions says it over and over and over and over and over again and then so so just to bring us up to date because we're going to look at a video from Samuel Green. He's an Australian, uh, he's Reverend, Reverend Samuel Green, I believe. Um, but Samuel Green, he's an Australian Christian apologist. And he, um, he, he's been doing this for a while because uh, back in the day, if you go back to like 2006, 2007, 2008, there were like a couple of us in the U.S. who were criticizing Islam. There was Tony Costa up in Canada, there was Samuel Green in Australia, and there was Jay Smith in the UK. And there were not a lot of other, there were not a lot of people who were uh, dealing with Islam uh, back then. So Samuel Green's been doing this for a while. And uh, so we're going to look at two videos, but in those two videos, those came after two videos. But the, anyway, they, they, they incorporate clips of the earlier videos. So we don't need to go through all of them. But here's the situation. So I had made a video with Al-Fadi going through all these Quran verses that say Muhammad couldn't perform any miracles. Then Farid posted a response and said that all of those verses came before Muhammad started, started performing miracles. So yes, at first, at first, Muhammad wasn't performing miracles and he just kept making excuses. But then Muhammad started performing miracles. And so... Uh, so Fareed's, argue, Fareed's argument is all the verses saying Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, those were before he started performing miracles, like splitting the moon. Samuel Green, po Samuel Green then posted a response to Fareed, and that this is one we'll actually watch. Samuel Green posted a response to Fareed saying, no, it's the opposite. All of the verses that we're quoting to show that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles came after he supposedly split the moon, according to your understanding. So the splitting of the moon makes no sense. If Muhammad split the moon in everyone's face, and then after that, they keep coming up, no miracles, why no miracles? Why no miracles? Why no miracles? That makes no sense. And then Fareed's, Fareed's going to respond to, uh, to Samuel Green's um, claim. And it's pretty, it's a dumpster fire. It's, a dumpst it's an epic dumpster fire. and shows you how desperate these dudes are. Let's split some moons. All right, let's split some moons here. Let's go ahead and uh, where is it? Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and watch the Samuel Green clip. Uh, AP, jump in with uh, anytime you want me to pause it, uh, but we could probably just watch most of most of this. Uh, probably pause it periodically, just for our thoughts. But um, we want to. I definitely want to save time for the Fareed. Response. I don't want to be impolite, so I'll just I'll, I'll sit here quietly and watch. Okay, good, good, good. We definitely don't want to be impolite. Let's go. Hello, everyone. In this video, I Hi, want Sam. to reply to Farad and his Pause. rebuttal to Pause. David Wood and Al Fadi. I'm just he, kidding. Go ahead. He says Farad. Is it Farad? <laughs> Hang on. Is his name? It, is it actually Farid? Like, did we get that from him, or we're we just assuming that it's Farid? Like, have we heard? It, it's 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 Farid. Uh, is it yeah. officially Farid? Like yes, it is. Yes. Okay, because I don't know. Because maybe Samuel knows the correct. I don't know. 
It is right. Farid. Yeah. Okay. Farid. If it's not Farid, correct us. It Regarding Muhammad Arabic. and... Hmm? Arabic. Uh, Farid. Yeah, it's, it's Farid in Arabic. Okay. Miracles. David and Al-Fadi were showing from the Quran that Muhammad did no miracles, uh -huh. and Farid makes a number of points to refute them and show that the Quran does, in fact, say Muhammad did miracles. Firstly, I want to thank Farid for taking the time to make the reply. But secondly, I want to thank him for raising some very important issues about how we interpret the Quran correctly. I disagree with his conclusions, but the points he raises are really important. And so in this video, I'm going to respond to what he says about the Quran, the Hadith, and one point that he says about the Bible. So let's begin. All right, so we got all this. All right, mate, Freed. So let's talk about this, mate. Isn't it weird? Like Samuel Green is like nicest guy in the world. But I think of Australians as like total criminals and jerks because that's, you know, that's their bloodline. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like I would expect them to be meaner than us. I, I'm pretty sure it's it's not even the majority of Australians that are descendants of, of criminals. They are entire, the entire, the entire, <laughs> the entire continent was populated by nothing but criminals, AP. <laughs> Yeah, but nowadays, like the descendants are like, I don't know. I, I checked it a while ago. But yes, no. Samuel Green is a descendant of axe murderers and tax evaders. All right. David Wood quoted Surah 6, <laughs> verse 37. Here's the verse. They say, why has no sign from his Lord been sent down to him? Say, God is able to send down a sign. He's able. But most of them do not know. We can see in this verse that people are saying Muhammad has not given a sign. Mm -hmm. In response, the verse says that God is able to give a sign, mm -hmm. something that we would all agree with. And David's point is simply that the verse affirms that Muhammad gave no sign. Now, before we look at Farad's reply, we need to read the other verses in the Quran that say a similar thing so that we can get the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, here are the verses in chronological order. I will not read all of them, but I will show them all. And you can stop the video to read all of them yourself if you wish. We don't wish. They say, if only he would bring us a miracle from his Lord. Has there not come unto them the proof of what is in the former scriptures? Why are not signs sent to him like those which were sent to Moses? And nothing has prevented us from sending signs except that the former peoples denied them. And then he goes through a bunch of the other ones. We'll be we'll be uh, we'll be looking at some of these again we'll when we go through Fareed's video, because uh, <laughs> his timeline contradicts pretty much. These thirteen everyone ever. verses are all discussing Muhammad not giving a sign. In response to this, Farad says the following: David, you must be. What are you laughing at? Just uh, him saying Farad. It's just fun. yeah. I was thinking. See, see, here's what I'm thinking, right? Since since all Australians are the descendants of total criminals, <laughs> you're talking psychopaths, sociopaths, and so on. Some of these guys are actually good at pretending to be nice guys, but you toss in a subtle, a something subtle, right? So look at me, I'm nice, but I'm going to completely mispronounce your name the entire time to throw you off and to show my underlying contempt for you. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> busted Samuel you're busted Samuel Green nice guy nice guy image but he's actually he's actually demonstrating his complete contempt for Farid no I, I hate to I hate to uh, ruin everything for you David but I just looked it up and uh, studies say that around 20 percent of Australians are descendants of people who were originally transported as convicts yeah so 20 percent yeah but Basically those, tw all, yeah, those yeah. 20 those 20 percent tainted the entire bloodline of all Australians. Fair point. Fair point. Okay, let's just accept all It's not like those 20 it's not like all the criminals just stay together and don't don't mix with the rest of the population AP. All right, all right, mate. Yeah, they're all, right. all mixed up. They're all they're right, all 100% criminals. All right. <laughs> but just to be just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, this is not this is not actually uh Samuel trying to <laughs> mess with them. Samuel's a, a legitimately nice guy. Significantly nicer than AP. 
new to this whole Islam thing. Um, you see, the Quran was. <laughs> Did he just say that Samuel? <laughs> Samuel's doing this before you were born, Farid. Did he just say that Samuel is is new to this Islam thing? Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Did he say that Samuel Green is new to this Islam? Thing? <laughs> Oh, these 13 verses are all discussing Muhammad not giving a sign. In response to this, Farad says the following. David, you must oh, that's be responding to, to this me. whole oh, Islam thing. David. Um, you see... <laughs> David, David, it looks like you're new to this whole thing. Right? David, you're new to this thing by quoting the Quran to respond to us. David, you must be new isn't, to this whole Isn't this funny? Like we, we always catch like what works with a person's crowd. And it's u usually in the Dawah crowd, it's just speaking, huh, maybe you don't know. <laughs> maybe you're too dumb or you're too new to this. And they that's just enough, right? And they're not, they're not realizing, no, I quoted everything exactly accurately and showed that your interpretation of Surah 54 is absolute nonsense according to the Quran itself. And then he's going to have to throw all of his all of his sources under the bus. We're going to see how. David, you must be new to this. Uh, 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 David, what are you talking about? David, what is going on? <laughs> right, here we go. The Quran wasn't revealed in a single day. Oh, it now, wasn't. You're going to oh, play. see, see, because that's what oh. I thought. Oh. oh. Wow. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the Quran wasn't revealed in a single day. That means so it's spread out over time. Okay, that's cool. Well, then all we'd have to do is go look. Uh, when did Muhammad supposedly split the moon? And when were all these verses revealed? We could do that, right? Oh, we're about to find out. Yeah, that the verses that you're quoting were revealed after the splitting of the moon and after other miracles, then you're going to need to substantiate that claim. If a verse is implying You're going. <laughs> I don't. Know. It's so dumb. His view is that these verses were before. <laughs> oh man! All right, we'll, we'll get into this in a few minutes, ladies. There were no Good miracles job. that have been revealed. Then that probably means that there weren't any miracles that were revealed yet. In all the examples that David quotes, he brings Meccan chapters. Of course, oh, yeah. yeah, not quite. I also quoted Surah 13, and that is a Medinan chapter. That is the dominant position. Oh, of course, there, there, you can make an argument for certain chapters either way, and there have been people, but the uh, the standard position there is uh, Surah 13 is Medinan. Uh, Surah, 2, Surah 2 is definitely Medinan, and you've got the same thing there. But uh, let's let's go ahead. It's our early on in the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, I fully agree with Farad here. Muhammad did not give the Quran in one day, but gradually over a 23-year period. And so, as Farad says, an early verse could describe a situation in Muhammad's life which no longer applies. And this is... Fa but by the way, does that, we want everyone to understand what's, been going, what's going on here. So just for clarification, Farid argues that Muhammad performed a miracle in the Quran. It's in Surah 54 that refers to the, it doesn't say Muhammad did anything, just says the moon is cleft asunder. And he says, ah, that means, based on much later Muslim sources, that Muhammad split the moon in front of everyone. This is the story that AP was telling earlier. Um, we point out that this makes no sense. That interpretation, which you're getting from the Hadith, you're not getting that from the Quran, makes no sense according to the Quran because the Quran contains all these passages saying Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. Farid just acknowledged, yes, those passages do say that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, but he's saying these were before Muhammad started performing miracles. And so later on, he started performing miracles, and then they don't say this stuff anymore. That's his claim. It's absolute nonsense. And it's funny that he's, he's maybe you're new to this, David. It's like, okay, if you're saying all of these came before Surah 54, you're either completely ignorant of the timeline of the Quran or you know the timeline of the Quran, you're lying for your followers. So ignorant or deceptive, one or the other. It always comes down to those when we're dealing with Dawah guys, ignorant or deceptive. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, alhamdulillah. All right. So uh, I believe Samuel here is going to point out, uh, no, you're the one who's got a problem with your timeline there, Farid. Farid's argument that the verse quoted by David and the others like it come from a time before 
Muhammad did miracles. That's what he said. Particularly the splitting of the moon. Uh -huh. Now, is that correct? Are the verses that say Muhammad did no miracles before Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon? No. Let's have a look at the order of the surahs. In this table, I've listed the surahs in their chronological order. You can see that Surah 54 is number 37 chronologically, and Surah 20 is 45 chronologically. And you so, so guys, just to be clear here, so notice it says Surah 54. That's the 54th Surah in the Quran, but the Quran is not in, Quran, in chronological order. The Quran is out of order. They did the brilliant work of arranging it longest to shortest, basically. And so Surah 54 is actually the 37th Surah chronologically. And then Samuel lists some of the other chapters that we quote to show that Muhammad didn't perform miracles. And you look, Surah 20 is the 45th Surah chronologically. So that's after Surah 54, which is 37th chronologically. And you can go down the list, Surah 28, Surah 17, Surah 10, Surah 11, Surah 6, Surah 21, Surah 29, Surah 2, Surah 13. And so he has these surahs in chronological order. All right. Notice 54, where Muhammad supposedly split the moon, that's at the beginning of this list. And you get down to Surah 29, that's one of Muhammad's last surahs before he left uh, Mecca and went to Medina. Surah 2, that's the, that's the chapter once he moved to Medina. And then Surah 13 is, is later in Medina. So all of these that we quote are later then Surah 54, what was Fareed's response? Fareed's response was, no, all of these chapters were actually before Surah 54. It's the exact opposite. And he's, he's saying, maybe you guys are new to this, but uh -huh, uh, they were all before Surah 54. No, it's the opposite. All right. We good, AP? We good to go on here? I'm just thinking, um, it, it appears kind of weird to us nowadays but I'm just wondering, like, which genius came up with the idea to of putting it in a, in, a, in, a, in, in such an order? Of course, the Muslim narrative is that this is this was intended, and Muhammad himself yeah, uh -huh. showed how it's supposed to go. But yeah, yeah I know, no, nobody actually believes that. Yeah, dumbest uh, idea ever. Yeah. So it was. So who who thought? Wait a minute! I have a brilliant idea. How about we order it all from long to short, with some exceptions here and there. This is amazing. Alhamdulillah. Let's go with that one. That's <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Look, hey, we should we should do a skit about that one day. And, 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 and one of us is sitting there going, no, why don't we do it chronologically so it makes sense? No, you idiot. Longest to shortest. <laughs> so dumb. See the rest of them there. All of these surahs, apart from 54, are the surahs that I quoted before that say Muhammad gave no sign. And you will notice that they all come after surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. Now, remember what Farad said. He said that the verses that say Muhammad gave no sign come before he did give a sign. Yet what we've just seen here is that these verses all come after Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. And Samuel's, again, he's too nice to say what, what I would just say. I would say, okay, so Fareed is either ignorant or he's lying. He's ignorant or deceptive. Take your pick. But he said all of these come before it. Wrong. They all come after it. My goodness. It's the exact opposite of what these guys say. And so there is no way that Surah 54 could be saying that Muhammad did a miracle because all of the verses that come after it are saying that he gave no miracle. Farad then goes on to... <laughs> you like this comment? Step one, base your religion on abrogation. Step two, catalog it out of order. <laughs> <laughs> How to create a religion. The perfect guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, wow. you need to make a video titled that. How to make a, How to make a religion the perfect guy. <laughs> Step one, base your religion on abrogation. <laughs> Step two, catalog it out of order. <laughs> so ridiculous. It's funny because you don't even need to make fun of it. You just need to say what they actually did, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like so stupid. 
Yeah, oh, you, you just make it make a video uh, instructions on how to do it and basically just give explanations from the Quran and the yeah. joke will just write itself. That's that's a good idea. It is pretty good. <laughs> Surah 10 verse 20. However, in another Meccan chapter, we find the following. And they say, why is a sign not sent down to him from his Lord? So say, the unseen is only for Allah to administer. So wait, indeed, I am with you among those who wait. As we just saw, Surah 10 is chronologically after Surah 54. There is no way that Muhammad could have split the moon, a cosmological event, and then have Surah 10 verse 20 say he is still waiting for a miracle. Farad <laughs> then moves on to describe three types. Muhammad had the sexual strength of 30 men. So I would, I would kind of, I would doubt that. That's his miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a case based on miracles. It's all like the dumbest, <laughs> the dumbest stuff. Like, how did he survive doing ablutions with, uh, you know, water with dead animals floating in it and stuff like this? And uh, how did he have the sexual strength of thirty men? All this stuff, and this is the proof. And, yeah. and then, of course, you have the giant mole on his back. And so this, it's crazy because you go back, and these are the, you know, these are the miracles. Look at the giant mole and. Oh, he's got the sexual strength of 30 men. This must be supernatural. And these are the miracles. And then uh, we get down, you know, later on, it's, ah, uh, he split the moon. In the Quran about signs. So there are three types of verses in the Quran. Uh, verses that do not confirm that signs were shown. Verses that speak of signs uh, being shown in the future. And finally, verses that do confirm that signs were given. What Farad says here is important... But he is wrong. When the Quran describes signs, it gives three different categories. The word for sign is ayat, and there are three types of signs or ayat in the Quran. First, there are the verses of the Quran, which are called signs. Surah 3 verse 19 is an example of this. Second, there are the signs of God in creation. Here are some verses. Indeed, within the heavens and earth are signs for the believers and in the creation of yourselves and what he disperses of moving creatures are signs for people who are certain in faith. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day are signs for those of understanding. We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. The heavens and the earth, night and day, the human body, the creatures of the earth, these are the signs of God in creation for those who have faith. Now, the third type of sign is the sign given by a prophet. And so there are these three categories. So everyone understand the breakdown here because this is relevant because, uh, well, let me put it this way. So Samuel's pointing out that you have in the Quran, different kinds of signs. Verses of the Quran themselves are just called are called signs. Mm -hmm. And then you have signs that are like part of natural theology, Allah's signs in nature and so on, in creation. And then you have signs that are like a miracle, a, a, a prophet performing a miracle. That's a sign that the person is a true prophet. And why is this relevant? Because uh, Farid's going to equivocate a bit when the Quran talks about signs. He's going to act like this is referring to signs of Muhammad performing miracles when there are different kinds of signs that are being referred to. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Of signs or ayat in the Quran. There are verses of the Quran, the signs of God in creation, and prophetic signs. Now, I hope you can see what Farid has done. He has tried to prove that Muhammad did miracles by referring to the signs of God in creation. We see this again in this clip. And in another, we find he will show you his signs and you will recognize them. And in another one, he says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. In other did, did, did you guys catch what? What Farid just did there. It's um, so his claim is that when the Quran denies that Muhammad was performing miracles, uh, this was before Muhammad actually started performing miracles. And Farid 
quotes the Quran saying that Allah gives signs and the law is going to give mm -hmm. signs and says, you see, this shows that he's going to give Mah that Muhammad is going to perform miracles. And it's not what it's, that's not what the verses are saying at all. So you're talking about Allah's Allah's uh, general signs. And anyway, uh, anyway, for, for Reed interprets these to mean that the Quran is saying that Muhammad is about to perform miracles. Right. Miracle uh, the Quran says repeatedly things like mm -hmm. uh, and, and there are signs for those who ponder and you know look at the sky and look at this and look at that. There are signs for those who believe things like that. So it, it, it's, it's like it's like uh, like obfuscating that whole concept of the Quran calling something a sign, playing with the word deceptively to then argue that that it was actually predicting miracles. That's just, mm -hmm. that's lazy and lame. That's pretty bad. And uh, so anyway, it's, guys, this is what the... This is what you have to do to make a case that Muhammad actually performed miracles. You have to do this. You have to treat the Quran this way. In other words, the Quran is confirming that miracles will be shown. Firstly, none of these verses mention Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And secondly, and most importantly, Farad has taken verses about the signs of God in creation and attributed them to Muhammad. It's like saying that when the sun rises, this is a miracle of Muhammad. No, it's a miracle of God. Farad is mixing up the signs. He then goes on to quote Surah 2, verse 118. He's mixing up the signs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, could be a, that could be a title of uh, Farid's channel, Mixing Up the Signs. But what exactly is the type of evidence that David wants from the Quran? And they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. And well, actually, that's what we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. Those who do not know say, why does Allah not speak to us or there come to us a sign? Thus spoke those before them like their words. Their hearts resemble each other. We have shown clearly the signs to a people who are certain. Ooh. Uh, this is, this is, this is. This is bad. Ooh, we got to come back to this because uh, several translators, even there, we have shown clearly the signs. They interpret even that as Quran verses, communications. Yeah. But let's go ahead and let, finish this out, and then we'll, and then we'll come back to Surah uh, Surah Two here. Faith. Again, this verse does not say Muhammad did miracles. It is referring to the signs of God in creation that are seen by those who know and have faith. Farad then refers to Surah. So, so just to be clear here, uh, Farid's response is, um, you know, Surah 2, Surah 2 talks about signs. This must be signs of Muhammad, miracles of Muhammad. And Samuel Green points out, well, that doesn't say anything about Muhammad there. So this could be signs in uh, signs in the natural world from from God. But guess what? It could also be signs because the the verses of the Quran have been revealed. And again, when when we come back to that, I'll actually pull it up on the screen. We'll look at some uh, look at some translations. Seventeen, verse fifty nine. Carrying on, there's one more verse that David brings up that I do believe deserves special attention. Surah seventeen, verse fifty nine. And nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs, except that the ancients rejected them. And we gave to Samud, the she-camel, a manifest sign, but on her account they did injustice, and we do not send signs but to make men fear. What an awesome voice. <laughs> Notice this part right here. It says, nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. So why doesn't Muhammad have a miracle? Why doesn't Allah give a miracle to Muhammad? Because others rejected them. Others rejected them, so therefore Muhammad doesn't get one either. Okay, now let's look at the verse again. Look at this last bit that was so conveniently ignored. Does Allah... <laughs> <laughs> so conveniently ignored because it has nothing to do with the point that's being made. <laughs> I don't even remember what he's going to say. Negate that he will send signs. Again, the verse does not say Muhammad did a sign. It is just a statement about why God sends signs. In this case, Th this is also popular in Islam. It's like if you don't quote everything because it's irrelevant, ah, oh, see what he conveniently left out here. And if you he have did, he did that so often in in his uh, supposed response videos to me, where he uh, claims that I deceptively left something out because I didn't mention some completely irrelevant part of something, and then he builds his entire refutation on that. He kept doing that. He keeps doing <clears> that. That is his his whole shtick. This is lame. Let, so let's go back. Wait, where? I'll give it? a miracle to Muhammad. Because others were. 
fine, but on her okay. account. So look, so, uh, and nothing could have hindered us uh, talking about miracles that we should send signs, except that the ancients rejected them. Notice, he's acknowledging that something hinders him from sending miracles. People reject them. And then in the end, he says, we do not send signs, but to make men fear. And for aha, uh -huh, he left this out because this is saying, what? What is it saying? <laughs> notice, notice what it says in context. We, we do not send signs, but to make men fear. And he's saying earlier people rejected them anyway. And so what's the point in bringing them if it's to make men fear and you guys just reject them? That's what it's saying. Fareed is somehow, uh, somehow doing the most amazing uh, mental gymnastics here. Interprets this as nothing could have hindered us except that uh, they should, you know, as far as sending signs, except that the ancients rejected them. But I'm going to send a bunch of miracles through Muhammad right now. That's how he's interpreting it. It's like insanely ridiculous. And, and, but David is being deceptive in leaving this part of the verse out because he hasn't seen how I'm going to twist this. This is, this is just bad, man. This is what is this? David is clearly wrong. And I have here, I refuted him. This is Dawa. This is what we do in Dawa. They did injustice and we do not send signs, but to make men fear. Notice this part right here. It says nothing could have hindered us that we should send signs except that the ancients rejected them. So why doesn't Muhammad have a miracle? Why doesn't Allah give a miracle to Muhammad? Because others rejected them. Others rejected them, so therefore Muhammad doesn't get one either. Okay, now let's look at the verse again. Look at this oh, last yeah. bit that was so you conveniently know what? You know, ignored. There's, there's such a, um, people do that. People do that sometimes when you ask something something difficult of them or some, uh, when you ask them to prove something, they're like, even if I did show it to you, you wouldn't believe me anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, which is just often a very clear sign that they don't have anything to show. And it's, it's funny that Allah does that in the Quran. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and it's funny that he, after he does it, after he makes the excuse for why Muhammad doesn't get any miracles over and over and over yeah. again, then Farid interprets, interprets the exact verse as, oh, yeah, but I'm about to. I'm about to do all kinds of miracles through Muhammad. Yeah. Don't listen to Allah. Listen Look, to me. Says, we do not send signs, but to make men fear. You see, this is saying that Muhammad is going to perform miracles like splitting the moon. Not one word about Muhammad here. Allah negates that he will send signs. Again, the verse does not say Muhammad did a sign. It is just a statement about why God sends signs. In this case, to make men fear. But it is not saying that Muhammad did a sign. Farad gives another example. Carrying on, there are multiple verses in the Quran that speak of signs clearly. Take, for example, Surah Al-Ahzab that speaks of a clearly. wind that saved the Muslims from being absolutely annihilated by multiple Arab tribes that surrounded Mecca. Again, this verse does not say Muhammad did a miracle. It is just saying that God sent a wind. There is no mention of Muhammad doing a miracle here. Farad now moves on to Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. Of course, perhaps the most obvious example of a miracle mentioned in the Quran is what we find in Surah Al-Qamar, the moon splitting. Now, keep in mind, he just said it. He said this is the best example of a miracle, right? Did he just say mm -hmm. that? That's the best one. And once again, it doesn't say one word about Muhammad doing anything. The, the, the interpretation modern Muslims give makes no sense in light of the Quran. And we're all supposed to agree that Muhammad performed a miracle based on this, based on one of the most ridiculous cases for a miracle ever. There are four reasons why this verse is not referring to Muhammad doing a miracle. First, the verse does not say Muhammad did a miracle. Second, it says <laughs> if they see a miracle. It is not saying they did see it, but if they did. Thirdly, it's describing the approach of the final hour in the figurative language the Quran regularly uses. And finally, as we saw in the table, there are 13 verses chronologically after Surah 54, which say Muhammad did no miracle. Surah 54 is not saying Muhammad split the moon. Farad now moves on to the Hadith and says the following. Why don't we have Aisha or Umar or Abu Hurair or Ibn Abbas claiming that miracles never happened? Instead, all the companions seem to agree that miracles did happen. His argument here is that all of the companions seem to agree that Muhammad did miracles. But I'm not sure about that. 
All the companions in sources from two centuries after the events, when Muslims were agreeing, by that time Muslims were agreeing that Muhammad could perform miracles, but yes, these much later sources completely contradict the Quran. This is Farid's point. These much later sources completely contradict the Quran, and by the time you get to these sources from two centuries after the events, then everyone's agreeing that Muhammad could perform miracles. Yeah, shocker. What about Abu Huraira? I have searched for a hadith attributed to him saying that Muhammad split the moon and I cannot find one. There may be one and I'm happy to be corrected, but I can't find one. But what I did find was a statement attributed to Abu Huraira, which implies that Muhammad did no miracle. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, every prophet was given miracles because of which people believed. But what I have been given is divine inspiration which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will outnumber the followers of the other prophets on the day of resurrection. Now, the straightforward reading of this hadith is that the other prophets brought miracles from God, but Muhammad brought the Quran. And this is, in fact, the Quran's argument. No, Surah 29. I'm happy to be corrected, but I think there is a hadith attributed to a companion that implies that Muhammad did no miracles. I now have my own question about the splitting of the moon. When I, I did it happen? Well, say so, something. When I click, um, I, so I looked at the tafsirs of uh, of chapter two, verse one hundred and eighteen, um, and I, I looked at Ibn Kathir. Um, I, I kind of uh, glossed over it. I glossed over uh, Tabari. None of those. They they don't mention anything about uh, Muhammad performing miracles. On the contrary. Ibn Kathir explicitly mentions that, uh, and we have made the, the reasoning clear, uh, proving the truth of the messenger, and there is no more need for further questions or proofs for those who believe. So, uh, but, but for those whose hearts are sealed, they will deny it anyway. So <laughs> Ibn Kathir clearly interprets this verse uh, as uh, not 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 prophes not promising a miracle or anything like that but as saying uh the quran is already clear as it is there is no need to further convince you so farid is apparently uh on another level he is he, he completely uh knocks it out of the park he could completely beat these people up and be the be the newly renowned scholar to whom everybody should have listened for 1400 years Forget about Ibn Kathir. Forget about all of these, the, these, these interpreters. They are losers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wild, wild stuff. Wild and powerful. Powerful, powerful. All right. <clears throat> I've got here the Sirah of Ibn Ishaq, and I can't find the splitting of the moon in this. Hi, hey, I've got it here too. I've got Ibn Saad's Sirah, well, and I can't find it in there. Mine's back there. I've got the Sirah of Ibn Hisham, and I can't find it in there. In there. I've even got the history of At-Tabari, and I can't find the splitting of the moon in here either. Now, I'm see. happy to be corrected. Uh, I may have made, made a mistake here, but I cannot find the splitting of the moon as a historical event. Yes, it is in the Hadiths, but we know that some Hadiths were invented to explain verses of the Quran. And there are Hadiths which give completely different reasons for the same verse. It's completely plausible that these Hadiths about Muhammad splitting the moon are exegetical and not historical. The Quran is clear. Muhammad did no miracles and any Hadiths that suggests he did must be false. One of the rules for judging hadiths is that they must not contradict the Quran. That and is, these uh, hadiths clearly... That, that's the important one there, because uh, that is a fundamental, a fundamental rule of, uh, of hadith reliability. If it contradicts the Quran, it's supposedly garbage. Well, guess what? If the Quran does indeed, over and over again, say that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, any hadiths that say he could are garbage. Instead, instead, Farid and many other Muslims just side with the Hadith and allow that 
to tell them that the Quran is actually uh, needs to be massively reinterpreted. So instead of just letting the Quran speak for itself, Muhammad did not perform miracles except the Quran. The Quran is his only miracle. Instead of that, they go with the Hadith and then use that to uh, reinterpret the Quran. Allah's clear, clear, clear claims in the Quran. Interesting methodology. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if these guys even qualify as Muslims, given that method of interpretation. Alhamdulillah. Contradict the Quran and must be rejected. I now want to finish with a point Farad brought up at the start of his video. I'd like to turn the tables around at you guys because you see there is this wonderful verse in the Gospel of Mark that says pretty much the exact same thing. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus, to test him. They, <laughs> and in another, oh, we find Where did that, he go? Will, that they must not contradict it. the Quran. And these hadiths clearly con turn the tables around at you guys because you see there is. A OK, so this is Fareed turning the tables on my video with Al Fadi. And uh, well, this is going to be fun. And, and I trust no, that will go very well. I trust that this guy is about to be massively massively deceptive according to his own standard not according to mine according to his own wonderful verse in the gospel of mark that says pretty much the exact same thing the pharisees came and began to question jesus to test him Sorry, they asked him for a sign from heaven he sighed deeply and said why does this generation ask for a sign truly i tell you no sign will be given to it the verse about Jesus in Mark 8. I just want to point out what he quoted here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. He quotes verse 11 and verse 12. Now, remember, according to Fareed, if you're leaving something out, which we didn't do, we didn't leave anything. <laughs> when I quoted the Quran verse, I wasn't leaving anything relevant out. I didn't know he had some insane interpretation of that verse. Um, but notice, according to Fareed's own methodology, if you're leaving something out, then you're being deceptive. So let's let's go ahead and see. Let's watch what he does here. And said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. The verse about Jesus in Mark 8 is not the same as what we find in the Quran. In those verses, people are asking why Muhammad did no miracle. But there is no verse like this in the Bible. Show me one verse in the Bible where people say Jesus did no miracle. In fact, in John 9, verse 18, and Acts 4, 14, it says that people could not deny that Jesus and his disciples did miracles, even when they wanted to deny it. Jesus and his disciples came with signs from God to authenticate them. Muhammad came with no such sign, and this is in fact what the Quran itself says. Anyway, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I hope that you have found it helpful. <laughs> wow. What are you laughing at? All right. I just, I just, I just opened Mark 8. And oh, you opened Mark 8. Then you probably saw yeah. exactly what anyone who opens Mark 8 will. Or yeah. you could pretty much go yeah. anywhere, anywhere in Mark. But let's just go to the chapter that our buddy Fareed himself quoted here. Here we have it. <laughs> Here's Mark 8. Look, that, that's what he quoted right there. So verses 11 and 12. The Pharisees came and began to question Jesus to test him. They asked him for a sign from heaven. He sighed deeply and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them, uh, got back into the boat and crossed the other side. Um, let's go ahead and look just a little. Let's see what, let's see what Fareed deceptively left out. What do you have here? Jesus feeds the 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> so right immediately before this, Jesus feeds, miraculously, mind you, he takes a couple of uh, loaves and fishes and feeds 4,000 people by miraculously dividing them up. And you keep going. Um, and what, what do you have later in the chapter? Jesus heals a blind man at Bethsaida. Go to the chapter before it. What does Jesus, what does Jesus do? Heals, heals, heals. Over and over again, he's performing miracles. Is this, and yet for re it's the same thing as you find in the Quran. Doesn't seem like it is at all. Seems like it's, ex it's exactly the opposite. What you, find he what you find in the Gospel of Mark, if you were blind, Jesus is going to heal you. If you were deaf, Jesus is going to, uh, Jesus was going to uh, make it so that you could hear. 
If you uh, were hungry, he was going to miraculously feed you. If you were paralyzed, he's going to miraculously restore your body. He's doing all of these miracles. If you're possessed by a demon, he's going to cast the demon out. He does these things over and over and over again. And then the scribes and the Pharisees, who had witnessed some of these miracles, uh, say, we want a sign from heaven. Like, so do, 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 some, do something big and spectacular. He says, no. So what, what's the takeaway? If you're sick, if you're uh, if you got a disease, if even if you're dead in some cases, he's going to raise you or heal you or something like that. If you're just saying, I just want a sign just for kicks. No, he's not doing it. He's not doing it for that. And according to Farid and his brilliant um, his brilliant methods of interpretation, that that that's the same thing as the Quran over and over again, like a beating drum saying Muhammad couldn't perform any miracle. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the context here is very um, is very clear. It, uh, right before the verses he just cited, eleven and twelve, which he nicely, nicely, very, very nicely limited there, you know, uh -huh. uh, cut there. Right before that, he is clear. The context is clearly that he just performed a miracle, just fed a bunch of like lots of people miraculously when there was no food. But then, and then the Pharisees came and said, uh, "Give us a sign from heaven," and he's like, "There will be no sign." And then he goes on and continues performing performing miracles. So, they, <laughs> this, is so <laughs> this is so stupid, so deceptive of Farid. He no, is I mean, performing I mean, miracles. Yeah, you, you, you just pointed out. He's like Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is performing a miracle. He's performing miracles. He's performing miracles. And wow. then they say, "Hey, we want a sign from heaven." He says, "No." And then goes on performing miracles. And Farid is like, "See, see, Muhammad's just see? like Jesus here." See, Jesus had no miracle. <laughs> it's the same thing, guys. Why are you using double standards? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know. Guys, these are like their champions of Dawah. They're all they're they're all like this. This is this is their methodology, and this is what we're supposed to respect and say, wow, powerful case for Islam here. Um, so now we're gonna watch Fareed because Fareed responds to Samuel Green. So we're gonna watch Fareed's response. Uh, super chat here from uh, Snipe says, do you think the Islamic savior or whatever they claim will come to kill the Christians and Jews in the end times is the Antichrist? So in other words, is the uh, Islamic is the Islamic. Um, I, I, I don't know if he's referring to uh, the Mahdi or the second coming of Jesus. Um, but is is the person who's coming back to uh, as the, the champion of Islam, is that going to be the Antichrist of Christianity? Um, and yeah, I would say I don't know. It would certainly fit. It would certainly fit because you've got the Antichrist is going to come. He's going to slaughter everyone when, according to Islam, that's that's what I mean, Jesus is going to come and he's going to break the cross and kill all pigs and stuff like this. But it also says he's going to end the jizya. And some interpreters have interpreted end the jizya as kill the Jews and Christians or forcibly convert them or something like that. And that's because that's what you would have to do to end the uh, the jizya. But Snipe, at the end of the day, um, there are there are people who are way better at interpreting end times prophecy and so on than D would because I've never studied it. So I'm just giving you kind of my gut reaction. What about you, AP? Do you think that the um, that uh, the second coming of Jesus or whatever will actually be the Christian Antichrist? Yeah. Okay. In Islam? See? All right. We have it here. All right. You're a Christian now. <laughs> Um, all right, should we jump into Fareed's response? Yes. I'm trying. I'm trying to think because I watched. I watched his video. I can't remember one valid or even slightly important point he makes in response. Um, let's see. We have Mr. Leon here. It says each time Jesus says this generation is to the Pharisees. He said this generation of vipers. He never called um, his disciples or his mother. Um, vipers. So he's saying when he says this generation, he's talking uh, specifically to people. But I mean, notice even even the scribes and Pharisees witnessed miracles. They're just asking for some some particular sign, something specific, like in the heavens or something like that. And he says he says, "No, you're not getting it." I want to see something different. You see, you see. Um, let's see. And Matthew F here says. Why are the guys in Dawa so anxious to demonstrate that Muhammad did a miracle, especially since it contradicts a traditional Quran interpretation? Uh, for the same reason that you find in the Quran. 
Notice Muhammad comes along and says, hey, I'm a prophet. And instantly people start saying, why don't you have miracles like, you know, Jesus or Moses or something like that? If you're some, if you're this special guy, if you're the seal of the prophets, why don't you have miracles like that? And they ask him this over and over and over again, and it's always excuses. Then Islam started spreading. And guess what? Those questions didn't stop. As Islam was spreading, People, everywhere Islam spread, people kept asking, okay, you're telling us to believe in this Muhammad guy or you're going to kill us. Tell us, uh, tell us what miracles he performed. And all of a sudden, as Islam spread, they start, they suddenly started coming up. Oh, well, you know, we've, we've got these new documents right here. These hadiths that say he performed miracles. Oh, shocker. Shocker. You guys who are, who are fabricate, who are cooking up hadiths like you're cooking up falafel. Uh, you came up with a bunch of miracle stories for Muhammad that completely contradict the Quran. So, yeah, Matthew, that, that's the reason. The reason is when you look at the major important figures who are, who are bringing revelation in the Bible, they perform miracles. Muhammad comes along, says he's the last in line. And so the question is, why, why don't you perform miracles? Allah gives all sorts of excuses for why Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. But later Muslims could just make up miracles. And then once you've got that, then you just stick with those, mir those made up miracles. And that's what Fareed does, because the bottom line is, if you don't, if you don't say that Muhammad performed miracles, he just, he just looks pretty, pretty lame by comparison. I mean, Jesus yeah. is walking on water and Muhammad's going, look at my lovely Arabic poetry. <laughs> like, what? Are you serious? Well, isn't it such a beautiful book, though? It's clearly a miracle. It's, it's a, it's an, what's funny is like one of the, one of the amazing signs of his book is how clear it is. <laughs> <laughs> and and yet over and over again, he's saying Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. What he really means here is that Muhammad did perform miracles, like the exact opposite of what the Quran is saying. And it's miracles that it's so clear. That oh, miracle. What is this, man? What is this? Oh, I did say, I did say we would, let me see if I can uh, bring it up. What a religion. What a religion. Surah 2. Surah 2, let me get this up here. Um, Surah 2, so that's the verse that where Farid, <laughs> Farid interprets this to mean that Muhammad is performing miracles. Uh, Samuel Green pointed out, there's not one word about Muhammad performing miracles. Samuel Green uh, interpreted it as signs. So Samuel Green pointed out that signs are used of Quran verses themselves and, and of signs in nature and of m miraculous signs from a prophet. And then Farid says, ah, but that says here signs. So this is clearly saying that Muhammad is going to perform signs. Um, no. So Surah 2 verse 118. Notice, notice Pickthal. Pickthal interprets signs as revelations. Right. Yeah. So look, and those who have no knowledge say, why doth Allah not, uh, why doth not Allah speak unto us or some sign come unto us? So they're asking for a miraculous sign. Even thus, as they now speak, spake those who were before them. So this sounds like it's saying the same thing, that the reason you weren't giving any even given any signs is because people before you rejected them. Their hearts are all alike. You're all the exact same. You all reject miracles when they're sent to you. We have made clear the revelations for people who are sure. You, this all said, you always ask for signs. We said you revelations. That's basically what it says. This sounds exactly like what we find in Surah 9, that isn't the Quran enough for you? Isn't the Quran enough of a sign? Why do you need a miracle when you have the Quran? So he interprets the, the, the signs here. We have made clear the revelations for people who are sure, which would fit with the rest of the Quran. And then um, Yusuf Ali, he says, we have indeed made clear the signs unto any people. Notice this doesn't, this doesn't even make sense. If it's saying you just witnessed miracles from Muhammad, why would they be asked? Why would they be demanding miracles from Muhammad? It would be one thing if they were demanding some sort of special miracle that he hadn't performed, but they're, they're just saying any sort of sign. Notice, there hasn't come a sign to us. They're not saying, hey, yes, you've done a bunch of signs, but we want some new sign or some special sign or something out of heaven or some trick that you could do. It's just, why hasn't anything, why hasn't any sign come to us? And then the Hilleli Khan, um, he just keeps it, the Hilleli and Khan keep it as signs. We have indeed made plain the signs for people who believe with certainty. And then notice Shakir as well. Indeed, we have made the communications clear for people who are sure. So uh, what am I pointing out there? I'm pointing out that <laughs> the Quran over and over again, Muhammad can't perform miracles. He, he doesn't have those miraculous signs. 
And then you've got people again challenging Muhammad, why don't we get any signs? And this is Surah 2. This is a Medinan Surah. So this is long after Surah 54. And once again, it's an excuse. You're just like the other people who demand signs. And then it says, the si signs have been made clear to you. But there it's, okay, what do you mean? Signs in nature, it's clear to you? Or the revelations? Street signs. Like stop yeah. sign. Yeah, so... Samuel Green interprets it as signs in nature. In other words, you're not getting any miraculous signs because you reject the signs in nature. Why should it give you miraculous signs here? Um, but you've seen multiple Muslim Quran translators interpret that as verses of the Quran. What are you talking about? You're demanding miracles, but you've got the Quran here. That fits perfectly with other verses of the Quran. And so um, this is a situation where Farid, in attempting to respond to us, is just messing. This is called equivocation. It's taking a word that can have multiple meanings, and then twisting the mean, you know, going selecting the meanings as you go along in order to build a case. So the question for Farid was would be show us that this is talking about a miraculous sign from Muhammad because there's not one word about that in the text. There's not one word about that in the text, and it would contradict everything else the Quran says on this issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want I want to quickly say about the whole issue of uh, mixing signs as revelations and signs as miracles um it is it is very common in muslim culture to uh refer to the verses of the quran as as signs as ayat so uh when, when you are in a muslim culture like my whole life we refer to quran verses as, as as quran ayat and uh and you basically learn that in the quran it uses the same term for the revelations because the revelations each one of them is a sign from Allah, a revelation from Allah, a miracle from Allah. Uh, the Quran is so miraculous, so great, so amazing. It's all a sign for, for his for his Allahhood. So um, when you open the Quran, when you look into it, you can find uh, the word ayat mentioned uh, mentioned like hundreds of times. I think, uh, as far as I see it here, it's like mentioned nearly four hundred times, and most of the times it refers to revelations, to verses. So you could just use any of those and say, oh, look, it's talking about miracles. Miracle of Muhammad. It's a miracle. But that's not the case. It never, no. the Quran never talks about him performing miracles. And if you do want an interpretation that completely contradicts everything else the Quran says on an issue, you need some pretty good evidence. And there is none. As Samuel, as Samuel pointed out, there's not one word saying that this is something that's referring to something that Muhammad did that is a miraculous sign. Um, yeah. so anyway, just problems, problems, problems all the way down. So we want to go through, uh, uh, Farid's response. It's a bit shorter than, uh, Samuel's video, but just to give everyone an idea of what we're talking about here. So here you have verses here. It's a bunch of translations of the same verses. So, um, just go with the MH Shakira in the middle there. I, I like, I like Shakira. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> Pervert. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Surah 6, verse 37, and they say, why has not a sign been sent down to him from his Lord? Say, surely Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. You've got that, Surah 6, verse 109, and they swear by Allah with the strongest of their oaths that if a sign came to them, they would most certainly believe in it. Say, signs are only with Allah, and what should make you know that when it comes, they will not believe? Now notice, this is this is classic, like, if, <laughs> if Farid were to read this, he would say, oh, look at the last part and says, what should make you know that when it comes, they will not believe. So this is saying that Muhammad is going to perform the miracles. When look at the rest of the translations, Hilali Khan, even if a sign came, they will not believe it. Uh, Yusuf Ali, even if special signs came, they will not believe. Uh, Pickthal uh, tells you that if such came unto them, they would not believe. Um, so yeah, try again for read. Um, Surah 10, verse 20. And they say, why is not a sign sent to him from his Lord? Say, the unseen is only for Allah. Therefore, wait. Surely I, too, with you am of those who wait. You see, he's saying, wait for the signs that are about to come when Muhammad splits the moon. That's how I'm interpreting this, even though I contradict the entire Quran. My goodness, man. Uh, M.H. Shakir, then it may be that if you will give up part of what is revealed to you and your breasts will become straightened... By it, they will, because they say, so this is uh, Muhammad being humiliated because people are nagging him for a sign. Why has not a treasure been sent down upon him or an angel come with him? You are only a warner. 
This is a law. You're only a Warner, dude. You're only a Warner. You don't get a miracle. Stop whining. Uh, Surah 13, verse 7. And those who disbelieve say, why has not a sign been sent down upon him from his Lord? You're only a Warner, and there is a guide for every people. Surah 13, verse 27. And those who disbelieve say, why is not a sign sent down upon him by his Lord? Say, surely Allah makes him who will go astray and guides to himself those who turn to him. Notice here, it's, it's like, you don't need a sign because Allah will guide anyone he wants to come to him and Allah will, uh, anyone he doesn't want, he'll turn away. So the signs are irrelevant here. Surah 17, verse 59. And nothing could have hindered us that we would send signs except that the ancients rejected them. You see? Oh, but David left out the last part that said, we do not send signs but to make men fear. This must be talking about Muhammad performing miracles like splitting the moon. What is this, man? <laughs> 17. Oh, wait, we, have, we, have, we have Christian Prince in the chat, by the way. Is okay. the real? I just oh, checked nice. his chat. He's in the chat. Um, so here you have a passage, Surah 17, verse 88. I don't think uh, this was cited, but it gives you a good perspective. Say, Shakir, say, if men and jinn should combine together to bring the like of this Quran, they could not bring the like of it, though some were aiders of others. Next verse. And certainly we have explained for men in this Quran every kind of similitude, but most men do not consent to aught but denying. Some people just deny it no matter what. Notice the signs are in the Quran. Verse 90, and they say, we will by no means believe you until you cause a fountain to gush forth. So this is people uh, challenging Muhammad to do something. We will not believe in you until you cause a fountain to gush forth from the earth for us. So make us some water. Verse 91, or you should have a garden of palms and grapes in the midst of which you should cause rivers to flow forth gushing out. Or you should cause the heaven to come down upon us in pieces as you think, or bring Allah and the angels face to face with us. So just do something here, Muhammad, anything. Or you should have a house of gold, or you should ascend into heaven, and we will not believe in your ascending until you bring down to us a book which we may read. Say, this is the response, glory be to my Lord, am I aught but a mortal apostle? Am I anything other than an apostle? And then verse 94, and nothing prevented people from believing when the guidance came to them, except that they said, what? Has Allah raised up a mortal to be an apostle? Notice, once again, it's, it's giving explanations for why these people don't get any miracles. Why... Uh, why they don't get something like splitting the moon or something. And yet, uh, Fareed's interpretation is that this must all be right before he split the moon. 2847. And were it not that there should befall them a disaster for what their minds have sent before, then they should say, Our Lord, why didst thou not send to us an apostle so that we should have followed thy communications and been of the believers? Next verse. But now, when the truth has come to them from us, they say, why is he not given the like of that which was given to Musa? What did they not disbelieve in what Musa was given before? They say, two magicians backing up each other, and they say, surely we are unbelievers in all. So notice the reasoning here. In the verse right before this, they say, why doesn't he give us an apostle? And then Allah gives them an apostle. And they say, why doesn't this apostle do what Moses did, namely performing miracles? They say, ah, uh, all you do is call them both magicians because of their uh, their magical words. Because and this apostle doesn't work. It's broken. Yeah. This uh, that's funny. This apostle doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, you gave us an apostle who's broken. Surah <laughs> <laughs> twenty nine verse fifty, and they say, why are not signs sent down upon him from his lord? Say the signs are only with Allah, and I am only a plain warner. Verse fifty one. Is it not enough for them that we have revealed to you the book? Did you catch that? Hey, why why aren't signs sent down? And what's Allah's response? Is it not enough for them that we have revealed to you the book which is recited to them? Most surely there is mercy in this and a reminder for a people who do not believe. What's the miracle? The Quran. Over and over again. And then after reading all of that, we get to Surah 54, which chronologically comes before all of this. And somehow Muslims are interpreting, again, we'll go with the Shakir here, the hour drew nigh and the mood did rend asunder. And if they see a miracle, they turn aside and say transient magic. If they see a miracle, they'll just say it's magic. 
And this is supposedly Muhammad standing up. Notice not one word about Muhammad, unless you go to the uh, Hilleli Khan here, and then they insert a bunch of stuff parenthetically. The hour has drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder. The people of Mecca requested Prophet Muhammad to show them a miracle. So he showed them the splitting of the moon. Notice not one word about Muhammad doing anything here. Just it just yeah. it just it just says. The hour has drawn nigh. The moon is split. What's that mean? It means Muhammad stood up and says, watch everyone as I perform a miracle. And then supposedly he does this. And then after he does that, then all these verses of the Quran with all these unbelievers saying, can you do anything? Why don't you have a single miracle? Why don't you have a single miracle? Just one, Muhammad. Well, look at this. Look at this. See this poetry that I just. Uh, it's, this, I, that, I didn't make this up. That's this Muhammad's actual argument. It's, look, look, look at this great. Look at this great, lovely poetry that I'm bringing. This has to be from God. A wonderful poetry. Look at this. How can you still deny that this is from Allah? This, look at the poetry. Look how it's gotta amazing be. it sounds. It's got to be. It can't be from anyone else. <laughs> All right. So just wanted to recap those verses because Fareed is going to continue arguing that these all come before it. <laughs> All right. We're ready to go through uh, Fareed's. We're going to go through Fareed's response and then we'll be out. Everyone's going to convert to Islam. Ready to see everyone convert to Islam? Let us do that. Yes. So uh, I'm going to be responding to a video by Samuel in which he um, responds to a video I made a while ago addressing Al-Fadi and David Wood's claim that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not have any miracles. Initially, I wasn't going to respond to this video because I didn't really feel too compelled to. However, with time, I thought about things and I said, maybe it's a step in the right direction because I appreciate his tone and I appreciate his demeanor, but let's get to it firing. So he likes uh, he likes Fareed's tone and demeanor. That's why he's going to respond. And hey, maybe this is going in a in a nice direction. You mean you mean Samuel's? Oh yeah, Samuel. Sure. What did I say? You said Fareed's. Oh, <laughs> yeah. powerful. You see, <laughs> <laughs> Allah, <laughs> Allah has cursed David to get the wrong name. <laughs> Ooh. For me to, respond. to give you guys a bit of a background, David Wood and Fadi made the video a while ago claiming the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't perform any miracles. Their claim is simple. They provided verses that suggest that no miracles were made. Hey, notice, he agrees that our case is simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's probably the power of our case, is you're saying Muhammad performed miracles, and we're quoting the Quran to you, Muslims, saying... He didn't perform miracles according to the Quran. Hey, their, their claim is simple. Namely, they just quote a ton of Quran verses saying that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. Well, Actually, uh, this is a sign that your argument comes from Allah because it's so simple. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, and so they have a simple, they have a simple case. But me, I have gymnastics. I have gymnastics that I can do in response. Anyhow, I made the response video that you should check out if you'd like to follow this check topic closely, yeah. since I'm not going to be repeating much of what I said in that one. But in short, my response was, those verses quoted by Al-Fadi and David were referring to the early stages of Islam. So he's sticking with this. The verses that we quoted, notice, ladies and gentlemen, we went through a bunch of them. All of them, every last one of them is from after Surah 54. Surah 54 is where Muhammad supposedly split the moon. He supposedly split the moon. After that, every request for a miracle should have been met with, what are you talking about? I split the moon. What else do you need? Instead, all we ever see after that is, is Muhammad ever going to perform a miracle? Why can't he just be given one single miracle? And the response of Allah is never, ever, what are you talking about? He split the moon. It's always, here's why Muhammad isn't given a miracle. So, what are you talking about? He already split the moon. So, given the standard chronological ordering of the Quran, the Muslim interpretation is Surah 54 is, I would say, as impossible as anything can be. It is hard to get a more ridiculous interpretation of a verse than interpreting Surah 54, the first two verses, as Muhammad splitting the moon, when all these verses that come after are explaining why Muhammad never had any sign. 
Uh, so what do you need to do? Fareed needs all of these verses to magically go before <laughs> Surah 54. <laughs> Oh, boy, this is powerful stuff. Or the miracles were shown. And I've even shown a verse that demonstrates that miracles did appear and did happen as a sign for the prophet, peace be upon him. Now, in order to... Notice that's, that's the one we went through where even Muslim translators don't agree that that's a miracle. They think that's talking about his revelations, Muhammad's revelations, his communications. And Samuel Green pointed out that, how do you, what, why wouldn't this be Allah's signs in nature? Not one word about Muhammad performing a miracle. And this is supposedly Fareed's refutation. I mean, uh, we, we, we give a lot of, we have a lot of patience with Fareed. Remember, Fareed is the same guy who, whose response, very, very related to the topic here, whose response to my video on the moon splitting was that uh, that there are no reports, nobody saw it, nobody wrote it down because people were asleep at night. <laughs> Remember, that was Farid's argument. I made a video basically arguing, saying if the moon was split into in the seventh century in Arabia, it would have been seen from these, these, and these, and these places. And these were advanced civilizations. They would have made notes of that. People valued the moon. They had moon gods. They would have made note of that. But for it is like, well, uh, the reason there isn't, you know, there, there isn't a heap, there are no heaps of evidence is that people were asleep at night. That's the level of reasoning that Farid has. What do you expect? And notice that interpretation doesn't even fit with the Hadith. The Hadith say that when Muhammad did this, people start saying that it's an illusion or magic. And let's see if other people say saw it, too. And then people start coming from distant lands and saying, hey, we saw the moon split, too. So this yeah. was supposedly visible by all kinds of people, many of whom weren't asleep. And yet no one ever mentions it. But I would regard that as like secondary because you could always interpret it as some you know, Allah is giving some sort of spectacle to the people there and maybe to some travelers who are going to come. The main problem is, guys, it completely contradicts the Quran mm -hmm. over and over again. Yeah. So anyway, but notice, notice what you'd have. If you say, hey, here's a miracle. Muhammad split the moon. It's right there in the Quran. And the response is, ah, what about all these verses where Muhammad says that he couldn't perform any miracles? Oh, those are revealed beforehand. Okay, well, we can't test it that how that that way. Maybe we can test it some other way. Like, if this is a big important thing happening, then someone would have spotted it. And according to the hadith, where you're putting your confidence, other people in other places did see it, and yet we just have no record apart from the Muslim sources saying it. Uh, so here we go. Samuel made the claim that there is an issue with the timing of the revelation of the verses. Verses that say Muhammad did no miracles before Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. Let's have a look at the order of the surahs. In this table, I've listed the surahs in their chronological order. You can see that Surah 54 is number 37 chronologically and Surah 20 is 45 chronologically. And you can see the rest of them there. All of these surahs, apart from 54, are the surahs that I quoted before that say Muhammad gave no sign. And you will notice that they all come after Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. Now, remember what Farad said. He said that the verses that say Muhammad gave no sign come before he did give a sign. Yet what we've just seen here is that these verses all come after after Surah 54 and the splitting of the moon. Samuel's source is a website. Samuel, a random Islamic website, isn't binding evidence on any Muslim. Upon closer inspection, it turns out that they are relying on a tertiary source. As in Jani's list is based on Ibn Nadim, an unreliable source. So this claim uh, about the timing of revelations and this list that uh, Samuel provides is unreliable. So let's carry on. Uh, notice how he just brushed, <laughs> he brushed all that aside. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, let's, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the list here that, uh, that Fly me to the moon before Fly the me to the moon. Do, do, do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Revelation order. The chronological order of surahs, i.e. the order in which Quran surahs are revealed, 
to the Holy Prophet is specified in several reliable sources, most of which are based on the narrations received from the great prophet's companion, Ibn Abbas. So they put together a list based on Ibn Abbas, a companion of Muhammad, and the father of Quranic studies. The traditional order of revelation is provided in the table. Notice it's the traditional order of revelation. The detailed information is extracted from the history of the Quran, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you've got a different numbering that differs slightly from the traditional order. And what do we have here? Chronological order of surahs, right? So there notice you have as far as the chronological order, the first surah revealed is surah 96. So in its in chronology, it's the first one. In the Quran, it's number 96. So it's a Meccan surah. And in the notes, you have some specific verses are of certain passages are from later. So we get down to, let's go all the way down here to number 37. So surah the... 37 as far as the chronology is concerned, the 37th surah of the Quran to be revealed is the 54th surah, is the 54th surah, except for verses 44 to 46, which are from Medina. So it's the 37th surah of the Quran, the 54th chapter of the Quran that you find, surah 54, was actually 37th chronologically. And we look after this, we look at the chapters after this, and what do we find? We can start going way, 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 way down. Notice the, the 55th chapter, chronologically, is Surah 6. We quoted Surah 6 to show that Muhammad did not perform any miracles. Look at that. The 51st Surah revealed is Surah 10. The 52nd Surah revealed is Surah 11. We quoted Surah 10 and Surah 11 to show that Muhammad did not perform any miracles. Look at the 50th surah revealed, surah 17. Surah 17. We quoted surah 17 to show that Muhammad did not perform any miracles. And we can keep going until we get down to, look how far we have to go down. Um, the 85th, the 85th chapter of the Quran chronologically is surah 29, which was at the end of the Meccan period. In fact, according to this, the first 11 verses were actually from Medina. But notice, this is long, long, long time after Surah 54. And this is Surah 29 is where you have, uh, of course, Muhammad can't perform miracles. He, he gave the Quran. That's enough. Yes, performance issues. Uh, but this, it's, funny, it's very funny. This is actually scholarly work here. Like They have their references down at the bottom. Um, of of their of what they have it's it's Theodore Noldeke, um, Sanjani. It's in a research paper, mm -hmm. plus yeah. uh, a chronological and this, order rendered, and 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 he's just like, it's, it's unreliable. Yeah, this is. I mean, this is pretty standard. You get differences, you get differences, but you get the same big picture. Um, and then notice in Medina you have Surah two, which denies that Muhammad could perform miracles. And if you go way way down, the ninety sixth Surah revealed is Surah 13, right there. The 96, chronologically, is Surah 13, Medina. It denies that Muhammad, repeatedly, that chapter, denies that Muhammad could perform miracles. And what's Farid's response? You can't just go to a random, no, Farid, if you're saying the traditional ordering, you can go to the, if you're saying that your traditional ordering of Surahs is wrong, you need to build the case that <laughs> Surah 2 and Surah 13, all these other surahs, Surah 29, right before Muhammad uh, left for Medina. All of these actually came before, <laughs> it's, it sounds stupid just to say it, all these came before Surah 54, which is supposed, which uh, even according to Farid is Meccan. He's supposed to be doing this in Mecca to the pagans in Mecca. And somehow, AP, how would you even argue this? Here, here's, the, here's the real argument. What's amazing is that Muhammad did have a miracle. That miracle is time travel. He somehow traveled through time to reveal all of these verses before he revealed them much later. I mean, you'd have to argue something ridiculous like that, that all these later verses were actually earlier because of time travel. Or early on, he got these revelations and then he traveled later in time to reveal it. You have to do something insane like that. But notice, he's just flipping it. 
This is actually a sign that Islam is true. This is a miracle from Allah. Yeah. And it's it's a uh, it's ab I, I don't even know what to do here. If we can say, hey, here's the uh, traditional ordering of surahs. Here's the ordering of surahs according to Ibn Abbas. Here's, here's the, you, you just pick one. Pick, pick, pick some. Pick some ordering of surahs and show that all of these came afterwards. Fareed actually expects us to ignore every single list <laughs> of the ordering of surahs and to just take his word for it. It turns out it is not reliable. Yeah, just take my word for it. Take my word for it that uh, all these things, even though it's the exact opposite of what uh, the sources say, just take my word for it that all of these come before Surah 54. No, you show us, Fareed, you show us that no one understands the, pro the proper numbering and, and you're the only person ever who got it right. Show us that, Fareed. We'd love to see your case. All right, we ready to go back? Oh, my goodness. I don't even know. Why do we take the time to, to do this? I am ready to die. And they ask, why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? The appropriate response would have been, what are you talking about? He just did a miracle last week. And, well, actually, that's what we find in Surah Al-Baqarah. Those who do not know say, why does Allah not speak to us or there come to us a sign? Thus, he's responding to Samuel Green. Samuel Green already destroyed this. It's, what? It doesn't say anything about Muhammad doing something. As far as signs here, again, Samuel Green interprets signs here as Allah's signs. And I'm interpreting it. I'm interpreting it as the same thing the Quran says over and over again, that it's the 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 verses of the Quran. And we saw multiple Quran translators transmit transmit uh, translate this as communications or revelations, not as not as uh, Muhammad doing some miracles. Why do you get all these different interpretations? Because there's nothing, it's there's there's nothing clear here. It doesn't say anything about Muhammad performing a miracle. What do we so what do we have in the Quran? We have a ton of Quran verses saying Muhammad couldn't perform a miracle. We have zero saying that Muhammad could perform any actual um any actual miracle. And so what do Muslims do? They go to things that are just saying signs, which, as Samuel Green pointed out, has three possible meanings, and they say, ah, that's referring to signs of Muhammad. So we'll go with the interpretation that completely contradicts the rest of the Quran. But we need it to fit with the Hadith, which comes centuries later. Well, trust me, bro. Yes, it's a Surah Trust Me, Bro. That's the real source. <laughs> oh, all right. Those before them like their words. Their hearts resemble each other. We have shown clearly the signs to a people who are certain in faith. Again, this verse does not say Muhammad did miracles. It is referring to the signs of God in creation that are seen by those who know and have faith. But does that really make any sense? I mean, look at the context. Basically, the non- Yes, that makes perfect sense. It's explaining why Allah doesn't give miraculous signs to people through Muhammad. So they're asking, why doesn't Muhammad perform signs? What doesn't make sense is, what are you talking about? He already performed a ton of signs. That doesn't make sense. That makes that interpretation makes no sense here. What does make sense is he's already given you either the miracles in nature, as Samuel's interpreting this, or he's given you the Quran, which, again, according to Surah 29, which was revealed a little before this, this is Surah 2, this is only like, this is two chapters, as far as chronologically, this is two chapters after Surah 29. It makes sense. That's the going response then. You've got the Quran. What else do you need? That makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense, what makes zero sense, is Fareed's interpretation of this. Muslims are asking for a sign to prove the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then they are told to look at the signs of creation, like the sun and the stars. How is this a response? Interpreting the term ayat here to mean signs of creation is meaningless. The obvious interpretation is... No, it makes perfect sense. If you guys are not accepting the general revelation in nature, why would he give you particular miraculous signs? You always reject them. It is indeed referring to miracles. So Samuel, think about this. Why did the answer change? Initially, when they asked for a miracle, nothing was confirmed. However, later on in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the Medinan verse, when they asked for a miracle, it was said to them that a miracle was shown to them. And it doesn't say a <laughs> It says signs, which again... That can apply to Quran verses. They've seen Quran verses. What else do you need? Or you saw signs in nature you still don't believe. So why why do you get why do you get special signs? Either one of those makes more sense 
than the one that completely contradicts the rest of the Quran. This guy. I don't know what to do, man. This is Dawah, man. And what's what's crazy is their followers are so incredibly stupid that they just, wow, Farid is really destroying this stuff. They don't listen. They don't pay attention. They don't think. In the case, the Quran is clearly affirming that the Prophet, peace be upon him, came with miracles. Carrying on, there are multiple verses in the Quran that speak of signs clearly. Take, for example, Surah Al-Ahzab that speaks of a wind that saved the Muslims from being absolutely annihilated by multiple Arab tribes that surrounded Mecca. So you've got a battle and Allah uh, and a wind, a wind came and blew in their faces and they say, you see, this is a miracle. And Farid is interpreting this as a miracle of Muhammad. A wind. Again, this verse does not say Muhammad did a miracle. It is just saying that God sent a wind. There is no mention of Muhammad doing a miracle here. Samuel, I don't think you realize what's going on here. The Muslims were besieged in Medina by 10,000 of their enemies, outnumbering the Muslims whose total forces amounted to around 3,000. Oh, and they were also going to be attacked by Banu Quraidah from behind. In any case, out of nowhere, a fierce wind routes the alliance and prevents them from annihilating the Muslims, causing them to return to their lands. Samuel, a miracle can be the result of the strange timing of natural elements. For example, we return to 1 Samuel 7, we find okay, that the what? Lord sent lightning what in the world does this have to do with the point? Farid is not getting the point. No, it's so he simple. He doesn't understand the point. I don't, oh my God. Yeah, so <laughs> notice. Notice you got a battle and then a windstorm, a conveniently timed uh, 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 wind comes and, and helps helps the Muslims win. Farid says, you see, this is a miracle of Muhammad. And Samuel's response is, there's not one word here about Muhammad doing anything. Not one word. Muhammad does nothing. So you could say, wow, we got lucky that that wind came up. Or two, yes, Allah supported us miraculously. At no point do you get any hint that this is Muhammad saying, everyone, here we go. This is the miracle I'm going to perform to show you that I'm a true prophet. Nothing like that. I'm going to put on a performance, boys and girls. Look at that wind thunder against the Philistines, which threw them into a panic, turning the tides of war. The prophet Samuel, of course, recognized this as a miracle from the Lord. So this miracle was a sign for the prophet Samuel. He didn't need to wave his hands into the sky. He didn't need to toss a staff towards the heavens. Everyone realized this, and he confirmed it as such, and the Bible confirmed it as such. Similarly, the wind was a sign for the prophet, peace be upon him. Once again, and that's why you have so many Christians when you're asked, where are the miracles? They say, look at uh, what we see from Samuel here, and this is the... <laughs> and the verse, O believers, <laughs> remember Allah's favor upon you when enemy forces came to besiege you in Medina. So we sent against them a bitter wind and forces you... <laughs> He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. <laughs> a wind comes up. Yes, if you are if you're not a Muslim, you say, "Wow, that was that was pretty spectacular timing there with that wind." <laughs> but weird things happen. I remember I remember Patton wanted to uh Patton wanted to march and he needed good weather and the the forecast was nothing but rain and he actually asked someone to pray for good weather. And they the guy prayed. And he got good weather and Patton was was able to go. This has nothing to do with Patton being a prophet or anything. Else. You can believe that God, God uh, responded and gave Patton good weather so that he could eventually destroy the Nazis. Uh, you can say, well, it was good luck. You don't say that there's evidence that Patton's a prophet or that, the you know, the, the uh, priest or pastor or whoever uh, prays is um, must be a prophet. I've heard a lot of people in, uh, throughout my life claim that uh, interesting things happen to them at very convenient times. Um, I, 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 I don't want to challenge their their convictions of what they've experienced. Yeah, because you get crushed. Not, but that is not the same as as a prophet performing a miracle or a person actually performing a miracle and that being recorded. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, you know, with this, uh, with this, uh, so notice he, he's pointing out that, that interesting timing. 
So you've got some, notice someone's dead and then someone raises that person from the dead. He was dead and then he gets back up. Okay, that's, uh, that's one kind of miracle. Then you have, it's like timing. It's just timing. Can that be miraculous? Of course. I'll, I'll even give you an example. So this is uh, maybe, uh, maybe two or three months after I became a Christian. Um, I started, uh, I started, I kept pushing myself harder and harder and harder and so on. And, uh, anyway, one night I got, I finally got a watch. I got a watch and I asked God to wake me up at, at 6 AM to, uh, so I could get to work. Cause I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to do. I had myself on this massive reading schedule and so on. I said, God, can you wake me up at six so I can get on this in the morning? There's a storm and it's actually a thunderclap. Pow! It was right outside my little window. Wakes me up. So I get up, I uh, sit up, I look at my watch and it says 6.00 and like 13 seconds or something. And the 13 seconds was about how long it took me to get my bearings and sit up and so on. So notice, I asked God to wake me up at six o'clock. Right at six o'clock, within a second or two, bam! Thunder right outside the window. Does this mean I'm a prophet? Yes. It's got to, right? <laughs> and of course, you know, look, look at the awesome timing. But not, notice it's notice it's okay, that was convenient. It happened exactly, you know, something woke me up right when it right when uh, uh, I asked or something like that. Or it's actually a miracle, but not in the sense of like someone being raised from the dead or something like that. The point is uh, how many people are going to be impressed by that as like, you know, miraculous sign? Well, yeah. Probably not a, not a lot of people. It's kind of me. It's I was the only one who paid any attention to this. I was the only one who knew what I what I'd asked and so on. Um, so the point is, these sort of uh, interesting timing coincidences. You can believe it. You can believe it. You can believe that there's something miraculous. You can believe that you know God did this or something like that. But um, a wind came up during a battle without Muhammad having anything to do with it. And Farid is pointing, you see, that's the miraculous sign. How many people are looking at the thing and saying, this is proof of Muhammad's prophet? I'm not aware of any, except for Reed. I have an example, which is um, whenever September starts, I get a little bit like uh, melancholic, like uh, sadish. Uh, and then toward the middle and toward the end of September, I feel uh, kind of more alive, happier. And I happen to uh, really love that old green day song uh, wake me up when september ends and this just shows that there is a miracle somewhere performed by green day or by me even. yeah so so here here's the real issue um wind wind blew in their faces yeah help the muslims okay can you interpret that as miraculous yes yes uh, if you're following that reasoning, everything that ever helps someone in battle is miraculous and proves that the, you know, the general or whatever is a is a prophet. Are Muslims going to accept? Would put let me put it this way. Would a Muslim accept that reasoning for anyone else in all of history? In other words, you line up everyone who ever won a battle or something like that through some interesting uh, turn of events. Would you take any of that as evidence that the person is a prophet? No, only in this one situation. Why? Because you got nothing else. That's just the sad part about Muhammad. They've got nothing else to go on. Oh, wow. He says Muhammad was too busy splitting Dia, Dia al Kalbi's moon every night. For those of you who don't know what he's talking about there, Dia was uh, one of Muhammad's companions who supposedly looked just like the angel Gabriel and People would see Muhammad with Diha. Al-Kalbi means the dog. Diha the dog. And and people would see Muhammad with Diha and say, hey, what are you, hey, what are you doing with Diha? And he goes, no, 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 that's the angel Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Not see. What... And Allah is all seeing of what you do. Remember when they came at you from east and west, when your eyes grew wild in horror, and your hearts jumped into your throats, and you entertained conflicting thoughts about Allah. And all of that was gone with the coming of a wind. Samuel then shares his thoughts on the splitting of the moon. There are four reasons. How, how can the wind come except by Muhammad being a true prophet? Why this uh, verse is yeah. not referring to Muhammad doing a miracle. First, the verse does not say Muhammad did a miracle. 
Second, it says if they see a miracle. It is not saying they did see it, but if they did. Thirdly, it's describing the approach of the final hour in the figurative language the Quran regularly uses. And finally, as we saw in the table, there are 13 verses chronologically after Surah 54, which say Muhammad did no miracle. So I'm just going to be dealing with this right here. Uh, number one, the first point was previously just refuted. Um, it doesn't require Wait, the when? Prophet, peace be upon him, to throw a staff at the moon or anything like that for a miracle to be considered a sign for him. Number two, Samuel says the verse uses the term. N notice, uh, he just tossed aside the first point. There's no mention of Muhammad doing anything. Yeah. He says, well, it doesn't have to. That's... If you're saying, if you, so, Muhammad wouldn't have to say anything. He's saying you refuted that point. He's saying he's saying Muhammad wouldn't have to say anything or do anything for it to be considered a miracle of Muhammad. So, if Muhammad is just sitting there with his buddies one day and they're sitting around and the moon splits in two over top of them, you should interpret this as as a miracle of Muhammad. You see, you see, like, I was I was right here and the moon splits. This, this you see. So. So notice anything weird. If you go outside one day and the sky is red, you should interpret this as a miracle of some guy. So, hey, that he did that. Why would you think that he had anything to do with that? That's what this is how far Fareed has gone down this down this rabbit hole. But hold on a minute, David. Hold on a minute. This is not just something weird happening. This is uh, a, a battle that is taking place where the Muslims are outnumbered. No, this is, he's, ba he's, he's back on the moon splitting now. He's back on the moon splitting. Samuel Green points out, if you look at what the Quran says, it just says the moon is split. It doesn't say one word about Muhammad saying, guys, the moon is going to split, and this is a miracle, and this confirms who I am. It doesn't say one single solitary word about Muhammad having to do anything with this. It just says the moon but is Muhammad split said, asunder. Muhammad said, look. So Muhammad said, look, look, the moon split. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> Notice. According, Fareed is saying, Muhammad doesn't have to say anything. You should just interpret it as a, if you see something weird happen, like if you saw a supernova or something like that, you should just interpret that as a miracle of whoever's whoever's close to you. I, I'll just go like, look at that, look at that, behold, and that means I'm a prophet. I saw a car accident. This means Bob is a prophet. <laughs> hey, look, a car accident. Bob's right over there. Oh my goodness, Bob did that. Bob, Bob, what's wrong with you? He's actually saying that if anything weird happens around Muhammad, it's because it's a miracle of Muhammad, even if Muhammad, even if there's not one word about Muhammad having anything to do with it. He just people, said that. People said, look, if implying no miracle occurred. However, verse one and three are clearly in the past tense. Number three, Samuel quotes 18 examples of verses referring to future events. However, if you actually return to every single one of these verses, you'll realize that every single one of these verses is speaking about the future. Only the splitting of the moon is referred to in past tense. And of course, I've already dealt with number four early on in the video. And finally, the last point I'd like to... I've already dealt with all these verses that came after this saying that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. I've dismissed them all by saying they all happened before. Take my word for it. I have no sources confirming this. Truth that was that was his response to the fourth point. Namely, you have tons of Quran verses, which, given the chronology of the Quran, all came after Surah 54. Farid is just saying, take my word for it. Source, trust me, bro. They all came before, even though it completely contradicts pretty much any list uh, of the chronology of the Quran you can find. They're all wrong. He's right. This guy, this 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 pillar of reliability and trustworthy reasoning says they all came before him. I already dealt with this. I already gave my <sighs> reputation, namely, uh, trust me. Yeah. Here we have Snite. Uh, it would be nuts if it turns out he's actually a prophet, but just really a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny if like Muhammad, if if it all turns out Muhammad was a true prophet but just like really really bad at it that would be funny <laughs> and he, he and he kept praising himself but he was just doing a terrible job and everybody's now <laughs> laughing at him like <laughs> and and in Islam they have to grant the possibility of things like that because they'll say like ah Jesus was a great prophet in Islam okay well then he did a really terrible job because by the time he was done 
his followers were bowing down and worshiping him and everyone else was uh, rejecting him. And therefore, like, there's no one who's just good to go. Like, he yeah. messed everything up, according to Islam. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Stevie Nine says, uh, Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise uh, false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's something you can point out, it, that even if Muhammad had performed a miracle, you say, okay, we, false prophets can perform miracles. The point is, Muhammad didn't even perform that. Like, he didn't even do what some false prophets can do. This is like the, this is like the, Muhammad's like the McDonald's of false prophets. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get through the rest of Fareed here. Respond to Samuel on his, what he said about Abu Huraira. His argument here is that all of the companions seem to agree that Muhammad did miracles. But I'm not sure about that. What about Abu Huraira? I have searched for a hadith attributed to him saying that Muhammad split the moon and I cannot find one. There may be one and I'm happy to be corrected, but I can't find one. But what I did find was a statement attributed to Abu Huraira, which implies that Muhammad did no miracle. Narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said, every prophet was given miracles because of which people believed. But what I have been given is divine inspiration, which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will outnumber the followers of the other prophets on the day of resurrection. Now, the straightforward reading of this hadith is Correct. that the other prophets brought miracles from God, but Muhammad brought the Quran. Awa. So you see, that, that's exactly how I would read that. Will, will he now say that it doesn't explicitly say that he didn't do any miracles? I, I'm really wondering. Well, notice, I mean, it's interesting because Samuel, like, like, on the issue of miracles, I just don't trust the Hadith at all, because we know that that for centuries, Muhammad's being challenged on miracles. And oh, shocker. And the, by the time we get to the Hadith, there's all these miracles. So I wouldn't even go to the Hadith for a discussion of this. Um, on, but uh, Samuel points out there that you even have Hadith that sound like they're they're denying Muhammad performed miracles. Um, Think about Abu Huraira, Sami, what you're doing here is you're cherry picking one specific report, which isn't even explicit about no miracles. And you're imposing this on I knew it. everything. About I knew Abu it. When reality, it. you have so many reports from Abu Huraira in which he's affirming miracles, like the multiplication of uh, dates, the I multiplication of milk, um, even the night journey. Abu Huraira narrates the night journey. Now, you don't have to, you, you don't have to accept that. Muhammad, I mean, Abu Huraira narrates the night journey <laughs> and we had this in a source two centuries after the event. So two centuries after people have been challenging Muhammad on why he can't perform any miracles. Shocker, we find all these reports that contradict the Quran saying he could perform miracles. It's amazing stuff. I man. know exactly what he was going to say about it, that he was going to say that it doesn't explicitly say that Muhammad didn't perform any miracles. <clears throat> and that's exactly what he did. He said it's not even explicit on that. Powerful but stuff. I just read it, and it's clearly, it's very clear what it implies. Uh, look, yeah, look, I'm, a, I'm a prophet. Just somebody just pointed it out. G J yeah. pointed out. I'm a prophet. See, yeah, I'm Mario. Prophet. Mario Amin said AP knew it. He's a prophet. They're pointing out that you're a yeah. prophet. Yeah. So yeah. yes, and I have to say, I mean, you are you are far more accurate in <laughs> predicting the future than Muhammad ever was. You just nailed it. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Germany, however, Abu Huraira is narrating, meaning he believed in this. So you can't. No, Farid. <sighs> someone Goodbye. saying that someone said it who got it from someone else, who heard 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 it from someone else who, someone else who said Abu Huraira said it quote one specific hadith and say oh abu huraira didn't believe in the miracles of the prophet peace Don't be upon need him. To. we got the quran and remember there's one point that you did not deal with from my previous video the companions of the prophet peace be upon him conflict with one another in regards to specifics matters that have to do with the religion matters that have to do with fiqh matters that have to do with the life of the prophet peace be upon him and you find them refuting each other in multiple hadiths however when it comes to the miracles of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they affirm that these things occurred. Why didn't Aisha, for example, say, what are you talking about? Why didn't Aisha say where? In your source from two centuries after the events? 
I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why he doesn't get this. Okay. Your earliest source says no miracles. Two centuries later, he was performing miracles all the time. Now trust these, now trust these later sources and not the earliest source. That's what you're saying. And you don't get it. You don't get how absolutely insane that sounds. There are no but miracles. There is, Why but, but there's no hadith. But there's no hadith which explicitly says in English, Muhammad did not perform any miracles. In those exact words. Yes. In those exact words. Any other be, order of words, it will not count. <laughs> got to be that word, those words. Let's say, hey. You know, you guys all you've got is uh, all you've got is Allah saying in 75 different ways, Muhammad doesn't have miracles. That's nothing compared to two centuries later. We've got all these fabricated hadiths. You're exaggerating. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never did this. You don't find examples of that occurring because look at his face. He looks like, isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing that you've got these wow. later sources that say Muhammad performed miracles? They all believe that the you Prophet didn't address be upon this. Him, performed <laughs> miracles. Now, before ending this video, I have a, a request from Samuel. If you're going to respond to this video, um, please uh, spend a portion of it providing me your criteria for authentic historical reports. What do you need in order to assume that a, a historical report is authentic and hopefully from there we can move forward and we can see how that applies to the miracles of Jesus peace be upon him and the miracles of Muhammad peace be upon him and to the rest of you guys catch you guys later assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wa barakatuh I hope we catch each other never yeah again. so so uh, so at the uh so at the end there he says what are your what are your criteria for a reliable historical report uh reporting a miracle um and different people are going to give different perspectives. AP, for instance, will probably say, I don't care what the I don't care what the historical report says. I'm not gonna believe in, I'm not gonna believe that a miracle happened. I'm a theist. I'm a theist, so I obviously believe uh, uh, that miracles are possible. I'm a Christian in particular, therefore I believe that miracles have occurred. So uh, notice what what's the difference? So think about what he's saying. He, he seems to think that Christians are just dialing up their skepticism massively in order to deny miracles that Muhammad performed. Uh, but we're not doing that with the Quran. So, I mean, we're not doing that with the Bible. So we're being inconsistent. Um, now think about this. Uh, Fareed's asking, so what are your criteria so we can compare that with the Bible? Well, Fareed, if our earliest source, let's, so, so let's suppose that, that the Gospel of Mark is our earliest source. Uh, it's not, you got the letters of Paul and so on. But let, let's, let's suppose that the Gospel of Mark is our earliest source. And that when we go to the Gospel of Mark, we find over and over and over again explanations of why Jesus cannot perform miracles. And then we've got a source from the third century that says, oh, Jesus performed all kinds of miracles. That's the situation. So notice what, what you would need for your, for your uh, argument to stand. Suppose all of our first century sources on Jesus denied that he could perform miracles. That's all they ever said. He can't perform miracles because other people rejected him. He can't perform miracles, no miracles, no miracles for this guy. And that's what we have. And then in the third century, people come up, hey, Jesus performed all kinds of miracles. That would need to be the situation to be a parallel to the situation that we find in Islam. Because your, early, your earliest source, matter of fact, your only first century source that you have in Islam is the Quran. And over and over and over and over and over again, it denies that he performed miracles. And how do you get around that? You just make up your own imaginary ordering. That makes absolutely no sense. And, tell, and then we have to somehow uh, <laughs> defend any traditional ordering of the chronology of the Quran and just take your word for it in the meantime. Um, your earliest source repeatedly denies that Muhammad could perform miracles. Where are you going? Where What? Where are you going in the first century that denies that Jesus could perform miracles? Performs all kinds of miracles in Mark. Performs all kinds of miracles in Matthew. Performs all kinds of miracles in Luke. Performs all kinds of miracles in the Gospel of John. Jesus performed all kinds of miracles in our earliest source. We, what Christian goes to? What Christian even goes to sources from two centuries after the events? We don't. We wouldn't trust those sources. We wouldn't trust a source from two centuries after the event. That's all you've got to go on. When you're talking about Muhammad uh, performing miracles, ah, this source from two centuries afterwards. Um, so really, really, uh, really uh, weird case here. But uh, if you're if you're asking what sort of sources would you want to take seriously, at least 
Uh, generally, th the general rules are the earlier, the better. The earlier, the better. So, you know, you're, when you're talking about the Gospels, you're talking about sources within the lifetimes of Jesus' followers. So check on earliness. Um, so early, that helps. Multiple, so having multiple sources. Notice if you just had one person saying it, that would be one thing. If you have multiple witnesses claiming that something occurred, that's better. Three, if they're independent. In other words, you have Matthew and Luke are both familiar with the gospel of Mark, apparently. So anything that Matthew and Luke are saying that also come from Mark, you can't treat that as independent. It's not separate. It's not separate. In other words, it sounds like it's all one source. Um, but Matthew and Luke both give miracles that are not in Mark. So those that's independent. So some of the miracle stories in Matthew and Luke are independent. And then in John, you also have uh, independent uh, miracles. So you have in each of the Gospels, you have miracles that are not included in the in the other Gospels. But also you have miracles that are that are in that are in multiple sources, like the feeding of the 5000. That's in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So uh, you've got that. You've also got things like Jesus' resurrection, where you have historical evidence. So Jesus was crucified. That's a historical fact. You ask the even, even non-Christian scholars, they say it's one of the best established facts of ancient history. And then the appearances, you have a bunch of people who are at least claiming and willing to die for their claim that Jesus had risen from the dead and appeared to them. Even Bart Ehrman, we did the, we did the interview. Bart Ehrman granted that Peter, Paul, and Mary were all convinced that they had seen Jesus risen from the dead. So notice, this is not me, this is not me saying it. This is not even a me saying ah, a source said it. Even modern scholar, modern non-Christian scholars, they don't grant the miracle, but they grant the same exact evidence that I would use to show that a miracle has occurred. He was dead, and then he was appearing to people later on. Um so you have those kinds of things. Then you have interesting things like enemy testimony. Like what are what are your critics saying? And lots of times you don't have some separate writing from your critics, but you see what your people are responding to objection-wise. So in other words, uh, in other, you find the exact same thing in the Quran. When Allah says, ah, they're saying you can't perform miracles. Here's why Allah is not performing miracles. Notice what you have there historically. A historian looks at that and says, ah, it's obvious people were objecting to Muhammad saying, oh, he can't perform miracles. Why is that? So notice, the Quran is responding to an objection. A historian looks at that and says, oh, then the, the objection was there. Someone was raising the objection. So that's called enemy, enemy attestation. What are your enemies saying about you? What do you have with Jesus? His, his opponents are saying that he is performing miracles by the power of Beelzebub. It's by the, he's, getting his, he's getting this stuff from the power of, of the devil. You could say, well, well, maybe they're making that up, but notice they're giving a response to people who are saying it. So they're responding to someone. Why are they making up arguments and then responding to the arguments? It seems, it really seems like Jesus is known as a miracle worker and that other people are explaining away those miracles by, by pointing out that, uh, you know, saying, ah, he's doing it by the power of the devil. And then you have Jesus response. Well, what Satan is going around casting out Satan. It doesn't make any sense. Satan is going around, is in the business now of casting out demons. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so anyway, these are the kinds of things you would uh, look for, and they're precisely the kinds of things you don't have in Islam. So don't, if you want to, if you want to dial up your skeptic skepticism, you can reject anything I just said. You can you can reject everything I just said about about Jesus. Don't act like we're in the same boat here. Our claims that Jesus was performing miracles that he rose from the dead, things like that, those are first century, multiple, independent sources, including enemy attestation, that's about as good as you can get for, for trying to argue for miracles from, you know, centuries, centuries earlier. In Islam, it's like as bad as you can possibly get for a case for miracles. Your main source repeatedly denies that Muhammad had any miracles. We're, 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 don't act like we're in the same boat on this one. Your earliest source repeatedly denies that Muhammad could perform miracles. The verses that you go to to show that he performed miracles in the Quran don't say one word about Muhammad doing anything. Your interpretation of that contradicts the, the interpretation of numerous other Muslims. And your only sources saying that Muhammad came perform miracles come from centuries later. That is as pathetic a case for a miracle as you could possibly have. Matter of fact, just, just one more thing, AP, and then we could close out. Um, 
So you've you've got uh, this is this is Yusuf Ali Quran. You can check out Yusuf Ali's notes on Surah 54. He believes that Muhammad performed a miracle, but he acknowledges there that one interpretation is that this is an interpret that this is referring to uh, a future event of the end times and so on. But here we have Muhammad Assad in his Quran, the message of the Quran. Um, let me see what we hear we have here. So this is this is his commentary on Surah 54, the opening verses. He says, most of the commentators see in this verse a reference to a phenomenon said to have been witnessed by several of the prophet's contemporaries. As described in a number of reports going back to some companions, the moon appeared one night as if split into two distinct parts. While there is no reason to doubt the subjective veracity of these reports, it is possible that what actually happened was an unusual kind of partial lunar eclipse, which produced an equally unusual optical illusion. So he says, maybe there's an optical illusion that's the basis of this Quran verse. Now, ready? Oh, ready? He says, but whatever the nature of that phenomenon, it is practically certain that the above Quran verse does not refer to it, but rather to a future event. Namely, to what will happen when the last hour approaches. The Quran frequently employs the past tense to denote the future, and particularly so in passages which speak of the coming of the last hour and of resurrection day. This use of the past tense is meant to stress the certainty of the happening to which the verb relates. So notice, even your own Muslim commentators don't, don't agree that a miracle, that this is something miraculous. He's saying there's no way. He's saying it's almost certain that there's that this is not referring to some miracle that happened during the time of Muhammad. Um, and so what? Seriously, we're supposed to take this seriously. So we have Surah 54, which, according to chronology, comes before any of the passages we quoted to show that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. But we're supposed to ignore all of that and go with Farid's chronology, even though he has zero evidence. What evidence has he given us for some insane chronology that contradicts every chronology of the Quran ever given? He hasn't given us none, but we're supposed to take his word for it from the source, trust me, bro. Um, then you have that even Muslim commentators don't agree on this. Then you have that Muhammad, even in the even in the passage, even if we think this refers to a sign that happened during the time of Muhammad, there's not one word about Muhammad doing any of this or having anything to do with it. In other words, it just looked like some, even if you took it as something that happened, it's some weird thing that happened one night and they'll go, oh my goodness. And your only source for saying that Muhammad performed any miracle is from two centuries after the events. Two centuries later, you find in the Hadith that Muhammad performed a miracle. And one of the Hadith, what, what do we know about the Hadith? They were fabricating Hadith left and right. Bukhari went, Bukhari had to go through literally hundreds of thousands of fabricated stories to get to the ones that he considered most reliable and Muslims can't stop attacking those either. It's a joke. Your entire historical system, which you treat as, as good as gold is a joke. It's sad and pathetic and you're contradicting your own God to defend the most obvious false prophet in history. And you're saying, Oh, that's just like with Jesus, dude, come on. That's serious. I'm that was very Islamophobic. So in conclusion, uh, there is no single early report which can be verified to be entirely authentic, which explicitly and uh, unequivocally says Muhammad did not perform any miracles. Therefore, it's clearly true that Muhammad did perform miracles and Islam is true. You need something like that. Guys, I mean, Fareed, I mean, Fareed, if you take nothing else away from just try to understand how insane this sounds to anyone else. Guys, we have one early source. That one early source that we have tells us over and over again, like a beating drum, that Muhammad could not perform miracles. It offers 27 different justifications for why Muhammad could not perform miracles. Therefore, believe in these sources from two centuries later that say he could perform miracles and completely contradict our earliest source and take that seriously. Ah, but what about the 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 chronology of the Quran? Just completely ignore that. Take my word for it. And and that's that's my goodness. Just saying it sounds insane. 
Islam proven true once again. This video made my iman stronger. It's made my iman stronger. It's powerful. I, I still keep getting those and I keep pointing it out <laughs> how, how lame they sound if I keep doing it. <laughs> I was not a Muslim, but after this video, after this video, I have, I have become an, a devout imam who went yeah. to the pilgrimage 50 times. Yes. I showed this video to seven <laughs> Christian priests and they're all converted to Islam after this. It's so pathetic. It's like, it's just like no concept of telling the truth in this. Uh, David Kazashi says, uh, I used to think that Islam is very similar to Christianity, but thanks to David Wood and the apostate prophet, I see now, I see just how different and dangerous it is. Thank you guys for your awesome work and hope you continue doing this. Also, praying for AP to become a Christian one day. I watch AP flip out. What? I'm never going to become a Christian. How dare you? Keep how your prayers you? to yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts on this miracle? Because it look it doesn't look like Farid is just gonna is gonna back down. He's just gonna keep saying it over and over again for his for his uh, fans, and they're just gonna keep going. Wow, Farid's got a point. No, it doesn't matter what chronology Ibn Abbas came up with. We can just deny it and say and put it in whatever order we want because that's how the Quran works. Great. I mean, that's great because you can then you can do then you can abrogate whatever you want in the Quran, right? Because you can just make up the chronology of the Quran. Uh, yeah, no. Con uh, last words, conclusion. So finally, once again, Islam proven true. Alhamdulillah. Yep, that's, that's the takeaway for people like uh, like Farid there. So anyway, guys, uh, I just have to say I do not know. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to do when your own when your own source can say as clearly as it notice. I mean, Muslims will take one like one Quran. There's one Quran verse that says Jesus didn't die and they'll base everything. They'll go all in on that. You've got verse after verse after verse after verse after verse saying Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. And nope, these are all wrong. And we're the ones who are cherry picking, right, guys? All right, guys. Uh, I guess no. I'll be at a conference. I'll be at a conference next week. I was saying we we're going to saying I was going to say we would talk to them next week. <laughs> Let's see what happens. It's, uh, who is that? Numidian said uh, this video made Jews reject Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're gonna have to steal that. We're gonna have to steal that and use it somehow. That was good. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. Um, so this is now you're all up to date on the case for Muhammad performing miracles. This is where we're at. It's us, as usual, us quoting the Quran, <laughs> defending Allah, the reluctant defenders of Allah, defending Allah's words, and then Muslims attacking him based on their own feelings and uh, insecurities. It's wrong. Don't listen to Allah. Don't listen to Allah. He doesn't know. Listen to Muhammad. Listen to the listen to the hadith. Yes, just just believe all these other people who contradict Allah. Powerful <laughs> stuff. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody for watching. Any final yeah, any final yeah, thought yeah. for everyone, AP? As my dear friend Sajid Lipham always says, stay away from Islam. It's pretty good, Sajid.